Hey, everybody. Welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Julianos, brought to you by his massive book, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2, over 700 pages filled with information about training, nutrition, supplementation, and PED use. You can get The Bible of Bodybuilding 2 on Amazon.com. While you're on Amazon.com, just go ahead and buy my book. You're already buying a book, Real Bodybuilding by Ron Harris. And now, all the way from Greece, please welcome Dr. George Julianos. How are you, doctor? Hi, Ron. It's almost, it means July now, and uh, it's, um, it's the time of the of the shows for the qualification for the Olympia. Yeah, we have, uh, geez, July is a big month for shows. Where's my calendar? I know I have, uh, I'm not going to any in person, but we're going to be covering them all remotely for muscular development. But there's like one every weekend. There's... Uh, Orlando, well, Orlando Pro has technically already happened. Uh, Mr. Big Evolution in Portugal, the Vancouver Pro, the Chicago Pro, and the very end of the month, another pro show in Spain, probably Alicante. And then August, we have Tampa and Texas and the Masters Olympia. So it's a lot of shows this summer, a lot of shows. Uh, I, I think you said you were going to go to the Masters Olympia, right? No, I don't think so, but it's pretty close to yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was hoping for some bigger names. I'm still. I'm, I'm hoping to come to Miss Olympia if I get an invitation for the Olympia University. Mm. Um, yes, I mean it's one hour flight to Bucharest. Oh, okay, that's not far at all. Jeez, Giles will go there, right? What's that? Giles will go. Giles is going to be the uh, live stream commentator, so he'll be doing the pay per view commentary for everybody around the world. Yeah, I want to do that with him one day. Any promoters out there, you're listening? All right. Actually, we're going to have an Arnold Classic UK right after the American one in next March. Huh? Yeah, so new promoters and everything, they're, they're really excited. So, yeah, yeah, you'll probably go to that. Yeah, and I'm sure Giles will go to that one, too. Yeah, Giles is our man in Europe. I don't know what we do without him. We would not have the coverage that we do in Europe, for sure. Um, all right, well, we have uh, a lot of questions. It's summertime, so let's get right into it. First question. I've been reading into a couple of rodent studies for nandrolone that appear to show nandrolone causing ventricular enlargement. So does this translate to human use? And is there actually something about nandrolone compared to other anabolics like testosterone, for example, that makes it potentially more harmful to the heart? You have to know all the steroids build muscle and heart 50% is skeletal muscle fibers. So... Uh, the LVH, the left ventricular hypertrophy, is a result of lifting weights, a high intensity, heavy loads, resistance workout. Um, so it's a reaction. You cannot avoid it. And uh, I guess that's why TRT doesn't affect, because TRT is a small dose. And uh, when you do massive with steroids, along with very uh, high intensity workouts, then you cannot avoid the LVH. It's not just a matter of of nandrolone, but I guess to the study, it was nandrolone from a so great examined because if you do all the, the anabolics have this the same effect. Yeah, because you've said before, you know, you can't stay on DECA all the time the way you can stay on testosterone all the time. Yeah, not just the LVH, it's also the hemoglobin, it's also um, the lipids, could be also the, the liver, you know, in the long run, you cannot avoid the, the side effects. The calcium score, perhaps. Mm. Okay. Next one is, is it true that longer ester esters like testosterone undecanate, like nebido, elevate more red blood cells and hematocrit than shorter esters? If that's the case, is it better to be on TRT on a fast-acting ester like tespropionate, which will cause less strain on the red blood cells and hematocrit and less estrogen spikes? The good thing about the small, the short ester is that you can microdose them so they clear the system, propionate it every two days, so you can do every other day your shots. Mm -hmm. In this way, as you microdose, you introduce less amount of testosterone that will have less impact on uh, hemoglobin. Yeah. On the other way, on the other hand, undecaunate, uh, it has a very long half-life of uh, two or three months, mm -hmm. and you introduce a massive amount of one gram. Uh, then comes cipionate with one week half life. Yeah. Uh, of course, we can break down cipionate and unfade and undecaunate microdose, but it will take a long time in order to reach out 
the levels because uh, they kick slower. Mm. Okay, and the cream actually is the best microdosing because it cleans the system in one day. Oh, yeah. Is, yeah, so is, the cream yeah. has much lesser impact on hematocrit than any other ester because it's like doing suspension, for instance, every day, small amount. Is the cream available in Greece, like over the counter, the way the testosterone? We have a uh, pharmaceutical grade cream and compounded cream, yes. Hmm. It's more expensive, but in, uh, uh, but Eventually, you're going to reach out the same levels, but at a higher cost. Yeah, I haven't seen cream used here in a long time. The last thing I was on was a, what's that thing called? Androgel. It was a gel. It was like alcohol-based. Androgel. 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 I was on that for about a year, year and a half. You, you have know. to take a bath if you want an abolism in androgel. If you want to cycle with an androgel, you need to take a bath. Yeah, you would have to take a bath in it. So, But I was sitting there like, slathering on like sunscreen. It was ridiculous. Of course, I'm a meathead. All right, next one is, how is it possible that I get a crazy libido when my estrogen is 110 with a total testosterone of 2,000, but I have a normal libido when my estrogen is 55 with a total testosterone of 2,800? Why do I feel so horny on such a high dose of estrogen? How will it affect my health if I stay on? 100 It's favor the sex drive. Yeah, if, you, if you pass estrogen, but also you have to know that what it marks is the proportion of testosterone to estrogen. So mm -hmm. the higher the testosterone, the more likely to elevate your estrogen. Now, let's say we need to have estrogen up to 50. Now, this implies for a testosterone below 1,000. Mm -hmm. If you break the scale of testosterone, then obviously the, the estrogen should also be, go three digital. Mm -hmm. uh, people are complaining that when they take the, uh, uh, the estrogen blocker, the anastasol, let's say the day after they have a lowered libido, Oh, hmm. yeah, this is crazy. So when his testosterone is 2,000, his estrogen is only 55. When he bumps it up to 2,800, it doubles his estrogen. What the, yeah. Does that sound right? It sounds reasonable. Okay. I mean, that's um, a, a big jump. Yeah, but I listen, know. too much of this. I mean, this obviously sounds like 250 or 300 milligrams of testosterone. But that's almost a cycle, okay? I mean... It's at 2,800 total T level. That's very high. That's very yeah. high. Okay. Next one is, if you take high blood pressure medication, lispimicol, lis lis and aldome, aldop, Jesus, almodipine, and you go to donate blood for high hematocrit hemoglobin, would you recommend to not take the medication before the donation because you have low blood pressure after the donation? To me, common sense says not to take the medication because I would have an even lower blood pressure and more dizziness. Yes, true, sure, but you're going to even avoid the hypertension by having a good breakfast, eating a lot of water, uh, eating salt, oh. and having also uh, one bottle of water to be full, you know, volume, volumized, yep. in order to avoid feeling drained. Or you can take your, medic your uh, blood pressure medication at night. Okay, fair enough. Before the, I mean, the day before, the, the night before. Next one is, my total testosterone is 3,000, free testosterone 70, estrogen 50, prolactin 8.52, and SHBG 17. How much should I lower the prolactin and raise the SHBG to have the best libido ever? Because my libido is just normal now. Hmm. Well, prolactin shouldn't be low anyway. It doesn't mean that low. If you kill prolactin, you're going to have the uh, best libido. And actually, SHBG has to be moderate, I mean, low, in order to liberate more free testosterone. So keep your free testosterone over the range. And this means that your SHBG should be, let's say, below uh, below 30, let's say below 40, certainly. Uh, and also, if you want to have more sex drive, you can introduce DHT or mesterolone or even HG. Now, DHT and mesterolone are liver enhancers because they liberate more free testosterone. They suppress HHBG. And HHG kicks intratesticular testosterone that also will improve your uh, sex drive. You don't get all these questions about the guys that want to increase their libido. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is uh, what you say the word. It's, it's subjective. 
What do you mean, good libido? I mean, to press a button and have an erection. What is this? I mean, but the only situation I could see where you might want a higher libido is if your partner, uh, you know, could be a male or female. If your partner has a higher libido than you and you want to match it, that makes sense to me. But, you know, most guys I know, especially if they've been married for many years, their wife doesn't want sex as much as they do. So having a higher libido is just going to make you more frustrated. That's just my perspective. Usually men on TRT make their wife suffer, but mm. they cannot follow. They right. cannot keep it up. Yeah, so wife. put them also in HRT to be fair game. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've heard women complain that their husbands get on testosterone and all they want to do is have sex. And, you know, the women, they don't have that drive anymore. If they're not 18 years old. All right, let's move on. Enough sex questions. Here we go. Being on TRT, how long do I take supplements like fish oil, omega-369, vitamin D3, vitamin E, DIM, calcium d vitamin K2, lycopene, nat natokinase, NAC. I've taken them since I started TRT almost two years ago. Do I take them for life or should I take a break from them? How long should I be? I can be? afford to take them for life. Oh. I do this now. I don't know if I can afford this in uh, some years from now, but uh, if you can do it, go ahead, because it's a great health investment. No side effects to any of those supplements. Take no, on. come on. It's just for oh, prevention. Good for you. They're all good. They do, they're just uh, doing good. No, no, no harm, okay? Ramaclean also is very, my specialty is very fond of this. Okay. Final one's a training question. I think it's a training question. Sometimes I can't train for three or four days because of problems at work or family matters. When I don't train, I feel like I have a nervous breakdown, stress, rage. So I wonder, could estrogen blockers help or maybe proviron? Please tell me what can I do or take until I can get back to train. I'm 45 years old on TRT, 250 per week divided in two doses. Wow. So I don't understand why this guy has to take over the, the, I mean, over the range testosterone, especially mm -hmm. when he doesn't train. I mean, 250 is a lot when you don't train that much. Mm. And yeah. uh, uh, not necessarily up to the issue, James, but uh, well, listen, if you are a lion in a cage, it's 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 more torturing injecting one gram to yourself, mm. you know. So go down 100 milligrams because you cannot use this testosterone that you're taking only for sex travel, let's say, and uh, recovery, or but there's no stress now to, to need the recovery um so you can go to 125 so one of the two doses of half a vial and uh, just uh, you know you have to, to adjust to the, to, the, to the needs i mean if you're super busy you can take a break for one week and then come and start coming back more hungry okay mm -hmm. or you can have one workout per week it's better than nothing right but um uh, I would say lower your needs for testosterone because simply it doesn't make any good if you don't use it for your workouts. I mean, your body doesn't improve. It's I mean, it's the same with 100 milligrams or 200 milligrams if you don't train. It will keep you lean. But if you don't have the stimulus, then there's no benefit. Yeah, I mean, if you've been training for years and years like we have, when I take three or four days off because maybe I have to go to the arm, a contest or something out of it's town. It's much better I because your body rests and it fills up with glycogen and you yeah. grow. I feel way much better when I get back to the gym after taking a few days off because I'm never going to. We're all. I, your I bet body so becomes fuller when you take a break. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, try. I think it's more of a psychological issue with him, more of a mental issue than it is something that he needs to be on more drugs for, like aromatase inhibitors. Uh, just put it yeah. in perspective. You know, three or four days is going to do you good. You're going to come back motivated. Besides, if you lower your need, if you lower your dose, you're going to have much less need for any estrogen blocker. Yeah, true. I mean, like O'Connor said, you don't want to just throw estrogen blockers at people. You know, they're not they're not like candy. They're not harmless. They will crash your HDL. Don't don't get on them for no good reason. So anyway, that is our show for this week, guys. Happy 4th of July for those of you uh, who celebrate that in the USA. Be careful with your fireworks. Don't lose any fingers or anything crazy like that. And uh, if you have questions for the next show, please leave them in the comments below or just comments in general. We love to hear your feedback. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video on your social media so more people can get this information. 
We're very, very fortunate every week to have Dr. George Juliados, champion bodybuilder, medical doctor, one of the world's leading experts on PEDs and how they're incorporated into the bodybuilding lifestyle. And we have them here every week for you guys. So thank you, doctor. Appreciate it so much. That's it. Thank you all for watching. Ask Dr. T. We'll see you next time. Hey, did you like that video? Smash that like button, subscribe to MD, and please comment down below. Thanks for watching.